In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an image mask scroll effect using GSnap on Elementor. Now, this is what we're going to be creating here. Now, as you can see, whenever I scroll, we have this image mask expand and we can see most of our image here. It's actually pretty darn cool. And the great part about this is that we don't just have to use a circle. We can use basically any shape that's already provided within the Elementor image mask um, feature. So you can even add a custom image if you guys want to, or any shape that you may want where you want to have this cool um, image mask scroll effect. And I'll be showing you how to do that in this video. Also, if you guys want to learn how to create this hover effect here, whenever we scroll, we see our image mask expand. Let me know. Um, I'm just still debating whether to make a video on this. I don't know if it's really that interesting, but um, let me know down in the comments if you guys would like to see that. Hopefully you guys end up enjoying this video. If you do, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. It only takes a sec and it'll help the video reach a lot more people. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos just like this one. So let's go ahead and begin here. Now, for those of you wondering, I'm just using an Elementor template. Now, make sure that you have your section set up. We're just going to drag and drop our image and we're going to start to adjust it. So I'm currently just using a section with two columns and in one column, I'm just going to add my image. So go to your elements and then drag your image element into your column. And then go ahead and select your image. Now, this is an image that I'm going to be using here. I actually just got it off of Pexels in case you guys want to get it. Here's the name of it. You can pause the video and maybe make a search if you guys did want to use this image. But I mean, this works with any image. Just make sure that the image is set to a landscape size. That just works the best. You can use portrait as well, but um, you want the image to be pretty large. Um, it doesn't have to be this large, as you can tell with the pixels, but you do want a fairly large image, maybe about at least more than 600 pixels around there. Um, I would probably compress your images, you know, as far as um, speed and everything. But since I am on a local site, I'm not really worried about um, the speed of my website. I mean, 608 kilobytes is huge. I would have it down to like 30 kilobytes, but whatever. We're just going to leave it as is. Anyway, choose your image. Go ahead and click uh, ins insert media. There we go. So we have our image here. I just love how stunning this image is. So that's why I didn't want to compress it and, you know, reduce the quality of it since it looks so great. So now... Go into your style and actually make sure that your image is set to full. And then let's go into style and make sure our width and our max width are set to 100. And uh, we'll adjust our height later on, but you'll see why you need to adjust your height. So let's go into advance and we do need to add a class to this. Let's actually add this now before I start to go over the, the settings. Um, so we're going to call this, see, what did we call it here? So we're going to call this circle mask, circle dash mask. So make sure you call it circle mask and then go into your mask here and go ahead and set that to on. And by default, it's set to a circle, which is great. Um, but our size, we want to set that to custom and then make sure that it's set to a percentage. And currently, as you can see, it's set to um, 100, but we're actually going to, whenever we go ahead and do the scroll, we, we're actually going to have it go all the way to 70. Um, but if you did want to make this any larger, you actually can as well in case you wanted maybe to go a little larger. You see how that we have that cut off? So what you could do is actually go into your style and you can set your height all the way, but as you can see, we still have that cut off, right? So I think we can do 800. And you see how that automatically fits um, the entire image there. So that's how that can work for you guys. But um, it was great how it was. So I'm not really going to need to adjust that. I'm actually going to set it to. Um, let me go back here to the mask. Sorry about that. And we can actually make this a little bit smaller. Set that to 70. But it really just depends how large you want to do it. Um, regardless, it's going to be pretty large anyway, um, but that's how you guys can set that up. So this is currently set up correctly there. Um, the only thing that we want to do here is just adjust our scale. 
because whenever we scroll, it's going to scale to um, 70% or I forget which percentage it is, but um, I'll have to double check that. Actually, I think it's yeah, it's 70%. So we want it by default to be actually at a smaller scale here. So then when we scroll, it goes to 70, right? Um, you can even set it to zero, but I like to just have it set maybe at something, maybe like four or five um, is fine with me. So that's great there. Now we just need to add our, um, our class to the section that we would like our scroll effect to begin or our scroll effect to trigger. And this is going to be this entire section here. So I'm actually going to click on my main section that we're using and go into advanced and then CSS classes. And we're going to call this um, start GSAP mask. I'm actually going to paste it in. So it's start dash GSAP dash mask. Okay. I'll actually type it in for you guys. Start dash GSAP dash mask. Okay. This is super crucial. Make sure you have this. It's very important. Okay, um, so now that's set up there, let's click update. And let's go into our settings and our elementor code. So I'm just going to open up another tab here. And let's go to our dashboard. Go to elementor, elementor custom code. Go ahead and click on add new. And we're going to call this um, image mask scroll effect. You can even do just image mask GSAP, but I'm just going to call it image mask scroll effect. So now on our locations, make sure you set that to the body end. That's very important. And let's paste in our code here. I'm going to paste it right in. Now that's working great. I'll go over the code here towards the end of the video. I'm just going to make sure that everything works properly. Let's go ahead and click publish. Set this to singular because we wouldn't want this to load on every single page. It could slow down our website. Um, so go ahead and choose your page that you would like it to load on. And I think I call this ASAP border radius. This is probably from my last video. So hit publish on that. And let's go on to our editor here and hit preview and let's preview the changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll. And there we go, it's working properly. Look at that. Wow, looks really nice. So let's go over some of the settings here. Um, sorry, some of the code. So let's add markers to this. Um, just so then you guys know when this is going to start. Um, so add a comma right at the end of scrub. And then on the next line over. Um, hit tab or enter or return. Um, and then type in markers. Now this isn't necessary, but it's just so then you can see where your start and end triggers are. But I feel like that is pretty important because it could be different um, depending on your website and where you would want that to start. So let's set that to true and then hit update. Okay, so now let's refresh this and we're gonna see our markers and we're gonna know when our GSAP scroll animation is gonna start. Um, so as you can see, this is our start and this is our end. It's very important that you have a start and end, especially an end on this one. Um, that's why I made sure to add an end on this one. Some of them I won't add an end because it's not that necessary, but this one it for sure is. So as you can see, we have our scroller start and our scroller end. Whenever our scroller start hits our start here, our GSAP is going to begin. There we go. And we're going to scroll. We're going to scroll until it reaches our end. And that's when it's going to end. And I feel like that's perfect already because this is when we get to the entire section and it's already set to the full size. Um, so let me go over the code here a bit. So this is just our, um, our function loader. It's going to load, um, our function. So we have it set to 
where it won't load in, within the editor because it does slow down the editor and it's just yeah you don't want it to load in the editor so that's why i added this um this class here or this code for it and then we have our screen size so um i actually don't know about this one i haven't tested this on mobile honestly um but just to make sure i just added it so then we don't have we don't see this um scroll effect on mobile it actually may work really well on mobile so if you guys do want to try it out it's very simple just remove um this line of code here and then go ahead and remove this one screen size and these two um and signs and just leave it like this and this will work perfectly on mobile um try it out let me know if it works great well and there you go um but for right now i only like to have gsap on um at least on desktop but you can try it out on mobile i'm sure it's going to work great on mobile so um but you can try it out okay and then we're just loading our um our gsap function here with our image mass function and let's go into the good part which is the gsap so um this is a little bit different because we did have to add a um, variable that targets um, a query selector and it targets these classes here so this part is really important because we actually we can't just target the where is it um the circle mask you would think that would work a circle mask image um but it doesn't so that's why we needed to target this entire thing just to get it to work but don't worry because regardless you don't need to change any of this as long as you used um the classes that i that i showed you you should be fine um but yeah so anyway so we have our gsap.2 and that's targeting um our uh our circle or <laughs> sorry that's targeting our image mass that i just mentioned here and then we set up a scroll trigger on that we have it triggering on our start gsap scroll which is this section here right here um our start is negative 15 so it's negative 15 from let's see that's our scroll from from our section so our sections right here it would be like negative 15 percent above our section that we have that's why that's right there um and then our scroller our our, our um our scroll bar um i guess trigger is right here so this is a uh, 25 percent um from the top i believe so and that's why that is set right here um and then we did set up uh, an, an end on this so it's 25 percent um from the center so uh, or sorry 25 percent from the section it's 25 percent down as you can see that's why we don't have a negative so anything that is not a negative it's going to move it down anything that is a negative it's going to move it up and then we have a 25 percent same thing from the from our scroll bar um from the top of our scroll bar to the bottom 25 percent and that's where our end is um hopefully that's pretty straightforward i do have other videos where i go over gsap um where you guys can probably get a better idea on how that works but um it's fairly it's fairly simple code here and then we have our uh, our scrub which basically just allows us to have um our scroll bar locked into um our trigger or scroll trigger if that makes sense um it basically just allows us to be able to have the scroll function where um it tracks the, the, our scroll um to our um to our gsap trigger so that's basically what scrub does it just locks it to the scroll bar if that makes sense and then markers which we just added and it just shows us our uh, start and end triggers um i don't need that so i'm actually going to remove that now and i don't need this uh comma there so we can remove that there and then for this one we're targeting our webkit mask size um which is basically this part here that i went over if i go to mass so it's this part the scale on our mask so it's just it's just targeting that css um feature um our masking feature that we have with elementor and it's setting it to 70 percent because currently we have it set to uh five percent but whenever we scroll at least whenever it ends and it finishes um with the animation the gsap it goes straight to 70 that's where it ends 70 percent and then we have a duration of one so uh depending on how you would want that how fast you would want it to go and how slow you'd want it to go you can adjust the duration okay so um that's pretty much it for this video
If you guys do have any questions on this, just make sure to comment down below and I'll definitely try to help you guys out. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos just like this one. I do come out with uh, GSAT videos and Elementor videos and probably going to come out with more of some programming videos later on in the future, but that's way later on. But um, mainly it's going to be Elementor and WordPress for now um, and we'll see how the future goes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like it if I haven't mentioned that already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.